So if we have this river from the side view, and at the bottom of this river, which is what I'm drawing, is actually the bottom, we have this pile of rocks. So we have this pile of rocks at the bottom of this river, and if we look at the river as flowing from right over here, we'll go ahead and see that you know, we may bump up and then bump back down over this pile of rocks. Now, as we, we're not going to go ahead and we can save it for another time what this wave may look like in fluid dynamics, but for now we're going to focus on our river and see how much hydraulic loss we'll have from this pile of rocks at the bottom of the river. So to do that we're going to go ahead and look at Bernoulli's equation and to start off with Bernoulli's equation we're just going to define some points and we'll put in some numbers. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with making this our first point and at the bottom after we flow over these rocks we'll go ahead and have this be our second area. So um, and as usual in engineering we do need to define just some simple coordinate systems, why not? X and Y. Uh, again just to keep something simple uh, we'll go ahead and use that. Now we'll also add in some flows and heights uh, so we'll go ahead and say that our height over here is four feet. We'll go ahead and say that our height over here is two feet. We'll say that the width, which I'll go ahead and draw like this, the width of our river is a hundred feet. And that's just kind of being drawn into the page over there. Uh, so as we have our river going. Uh, let's go ahead and also define a flow rate, right? This is a river, we're going across, it's a hundred foot river. Uh, so we are going to have some flow rate Q, uh, we'll go put that at 2400 uh, feet per second, feet cubed per second as our flow rate, as our flow rate, uh, well, yeah, and we're using uh, feet in this example just to get used to something a little different. Um, so let's go ahead and start with Bernoulli's. Uh, Bernoulli's, we're going to go ahead and use this form over here where we'll have P2 over rho uh, plus our velocity term. And we're again, I'm keeping the second side on the left and I'll keep the first side on the right. Our velocity term squared divided by 2g plus z2. And that's going to equal everything on our right hand side, which is again our P1 over rho plus V1 squared over 2g plus Z1. Now there's our Bernoulli's, and it's standard, what I'll call it standard form, uh, but we do need to add in our hydraulic or our head loss um, in here because this is just, you know, without the head loss, this doesn't include anything to do with these rocks or what we're trying to look for in terms of these rocks is probably a better way to phrase that. So we do need to add in um, some term that we're going to be losing, so we'll have a minus, and I'll go ahead and call it hydraulic loss. Um, HL, H sub L. Now that we have our Bernoulli's, we can go ahead and start to solve this equation for our hydraulic loss. The first thing we want to do with Bernoulli's, uh, and in general, is look and see if we can just cancel anything out. And in this case, we can cancel our pressures and our uh, densities. Now, you see, I didn't even number the densities because it's all water. We'll go ahead and assume it's water flowing through uh, this river, and our pressures are going to be the same because they're at the top of this water, right? They're both on the uh, touching the very surface of the water, atmosphere if you will, uh, just going at the top there. So we can go ahead and just cross these out and say that they cancel each other when we subtract them from each side of the equation. And we'll continue with our Bernoulli's plugging in these values. Uh, we'll see that we have our Z1, that's a check. Let's go ahead and make sure that we have everything we need. We do have our Z1, which is this height over here. We have our height Z2. We, uh, we do know our gravity, which will be 32.2. That's going to be the same on both sides. And again, that's a uh, foot second squared. And our velocity, we don't have directly, but we do have a flow rate. And we do have the area over which this river is flowing. So if we have our flow rate and the area through which we're flowing through, we will have our velocity squared, so we can go ahead and check that off. But to do that, we'll need to write our second equation, because right now there's two equations, two unknowns, our unknowns being 
uh, or three unknowns are V1, V2, and HL. So we'll write our equations for V1 equals Q over A1, and V2 equals Q over A2. And we can go ahead and start plugging these values in um, with the algebra. And I'll keep this green for now because all, all of our equations are in green. So Q is 2400 foot cube per second. A1, which is over on this side, is going to be 4 feet times 100 feet, which is our width. And uh, on our second, uh, we'll just finish this one first since we're right there. Um, this is going to end up equaling 6 feet per second. And that's our velocity uh, at this first point. And similarly, this entire equation uh, translates over to V2 per second, so Q per second uh, times, and then except now we just need to change our height, which is going to be 2 feet times 100 feet, and that's going to equal 12 feet per second. And we can discuss in a later time, or when we go back to Bernoulli's equation again, why is this velocity faster than this one? It has to do with the reduced amount of area that it's going through. Um, but we're con concentrating today on this hydraulic or this head loss term. So um, let's go ahead and uh, now that we have our velocity terms, Let's go ahead and manipulate this algebra up here so it's a little easier to see. And we'll just go ahead and plug in the terms and I'll leave the algebra uh, for you to do as an exercise uh, if you want. Uh, so we have this HL term, which we'll go ahead and move over to the other side. And we're going to move these two terms back over to the right side of the equation just so we have head loss on the left, which is going to equal uh, this V1 squared over 2G plus z1, and now we're going to move these terms over to the other side of the equation, so we need a minus v2 squared over 2g minus z2. And we have everything that we need now because we did solve for our v1 and our v2, and we can go ahead and plug in all those terms, and we will find that our, oops, our head loss, let me just let me rewrite that there, head loss equals 0 0.32 feet. Now, let's take a look at this term right here for head loss. And let's see if it makes sense, right? Uh, that's really what we're after is the head loss term, but we want it to be correct and make sure that we have everything correct about it. Uh, so first things first, um, with this head loss term, we see that we're gonna, we have, we're, our flow is going from one to two. Now, does that make sense? Because our head loss term is positive, right? What if it were negative? Uh, that we are probably going from two to one. So positive seems like it makes sense over here uh, because we are losing, right? We are losing height going this direction. So it makes sense to have a positive loss in that sense. Um, now we look at uh, the way that we're flowing over. So that means that we're losing some kind of a energy, if you will, this head loss, uh, the pressure as it goes through. That makes sense also, right? We're hitting these rocks. We should lose something as we hit it if we want to go over them. Um, so in general, this head loss term is making sense. So it seems like we have a good term here. Um, the only thing I'm concerned about in this problem is this x, which I pointed to the right. Even though we're flowing to the left, that's OK. Um, now, uh, that's what we wanted to talk about head loss. In the future, right, why do we even care about head loss? Uh, we care about it because, you know, in systems that are gravity-fed pipes uh, or, you know, it, pipes in general where we're moving, uh, let's say, from a shower head down pipes all the way to the sewer system in your, in your town or whatever it may be, we need to know how much loss we have to see uh, what we do with pumps, right? And uh, in order to do that, we may add on terms here, it's so like so plus some uh, pump work, right? So work sub pump, W sub P over here. And what that would do is we can talk about in a different uh, lecture. And what that does is adds work into our system so we can now go from point two to point one. We can pump water up into our river and that allows us uh, to really control flows in systems and that's a really powerful part of engineering.